with common uh, pain points that I see in Google Land. Also, sorry, can you guys see my the pictures on the sidebar? No. Not sure how to. No, I don't see pictures on the sidebar. Okay, so you don't see the. Okay, so we're good. Um, I'm gonna start with some some pain points uh, that I hear from a lot of people. So the first one is Google Analytics. It's really complex. I don't know where to start. Um, very common one. I don't have time to look at my data. You know, we're all busy creating content and uh, sharing things on social media, trying to improve our business. So I get that. What do the numbers mean? You know, yeah, I look at my data, but I don't know how to interpret any of it. So if any of those resonate with you, um, we're gonna try to attack some of those today. So my goals are to get you a little bit more comfortable with Google Analytics. Uh, I wanna help simplify it so you can find what you need quickly. And I'm gonna recommend a handful of reports uh, that you can start using today. So uh, just quickly, the, the topic areas, um, we're gonna explain what Google Analytics is, why you should care. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to set it up on your website. We'll talk about the data that is collected and how it's collected, how that data is organized in the interface, uh, some business questions that you can answer with Google Analytics. And then, like I said, some reports to get you started. So what is Google Analytics? Well, um, at its core, it is a free web analytics tool provided from Google uh, that generates detailed metrics about all the things that are happening on your website. So you can track visitors and what they do on your site. Um, it's installed on roughly 30 to 50 million websites around the world. It's probably the most popular analytics platform out there. But what is it really? I want you to think of it as a tool that helps you answer your business questions, your, your top marketing questions. So we're gonna keep that framework in mind. So why do I need Google Analytics? Well, I figure you wanna know how your website is performing. Um, most of us here probably want to know how our content is performing and just overall we want to know what's working what's broken you know what what's the roi of everything i'm doing so just some high level questions that uh, you can answer with google analytics it's kind of like the journalism questions if any of you went to journalism school the who what where when that type stuff so you can get information on who is visiting your site uh, not the exact person, but kind of a, an anonymous, you know, was it a mobile device user? Uh, was it somebody from the state of Illinois? Uh, that type of thing. What are they doing on the site? What content are they looking at? How do they move around? Where did they come from? So that's the, the traffic source. Was it from a paid campaign? Was it from Google organic search? Uh, obviously, when they visit your site is important. We can answer that and how well things are working. So, you know, how successful is your site bringing people in and converting people? Uh, one note, Google won't tell you why things are happening. Uh, think of Google Analytics as kind of like your car dashboard. So think about how difficult it might be to drive your car if you didn't have any kind of indicators of how things were running. Well, that's how Google Analytics functions for your website. And if you're not using analytics, I kind of think you're, you're basically kind of throwing darts at a dartboard while you're blindfolded. So uh, yeah, you might hit the bullseye occasionally, but more often than not, you probably won't. Uh, an analogy I like to give people um, that helps, I think, stress the benefits in the digital world of the analytics we have available is, is looking at a physical store. So uh, imagine you own a, a bookstore, obviously this is a, uh, pre-COVID, um, you know, you, there's a lot of questions you would like to know about uh, things happening in your store. So how do people find your store? Where do they enter? How do they move around? What are they looking at? That kind of thing. So imagine these same questions, but now apply this to the digital world. So your website. So we're just going to replace store with website. And using Google Analytics, we can measure all of these things, which are really kind of hard to measure in, in real life. So I think we have a lot more advantages um, in the online environment. So 
Going to talk briefly about setting up Google Analytics on your site. You guys probably won't need to set it up, but it, it's kind of good to know. Uh, you would just go to, uh, you would go to a page like this. You would just Google, Google Analytics, um, take you to this page. You start the, the process. There's just a couple steps to get signed up. You need some information like just your company name, your URL, uh, that kind of thing, some basic things. And then uh, here's the important part. What they give you then is they give you a tracking ID. That's kind of like your account number. And then they give you uh, a, a bunch of code. So that's that uh, JavaScript there in the big box on the bottom. So that is what allows us to make measurements of everything that's happening on our website. So what you need to do is uh, you got to implement that code. So it needs to go, it's just a snippet of JavaScript code and it goes on every page of your website. So there's different ways to implement it. You can use your web developer, can hard code it. You can use a tool like Google Tag Manager. If you have a WordPress site, there's plugins that will make it real easy. So there's multiple ways to implement it. And then, like I said, this code is what helps us measure uh, visitor data and then it sends it to the Google um, data servers. So just to kind of give you a picture of how that works, uh, when someone visits your website, they get cookied. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this if you've uh, ever done any shopping online and seen that website follow you around in paid ads. Uh, so those cookies uh, help identify, uh, you know, the, the mobile device or the computer that talks with the JavaScript that's on the page. When somebody looks at your page, that information gets sent over to Google's servers and then Google processes that and then sends it to your uh, interface in the Google Analytics interface. Um, so I want to give you a very high level view of the data that's collected because that can be pretty important. So as I said, it, it operates off of JavaScript and first party cookies. And then the data that's collected is it's all anonymous and it's, it's aggregated data. So you'll never know that, you know, Kyle or Dennis visited your website. Uh, there's no personally identifiable information or PII. Um, you'll hear this a lot in reference, especially to the GDPR restrictions that uh, started about a year or two ago in Europe. So PII is things like an email address, a phone number, a, an actual home address. So none of that should be in your Google Analytics. Now, you might accidentally pull some of that in. So um, that's something to check for uh, because that can get you in a lot of trouble if you're collecting that stuff because Google doesn't want it in its uh, database. So uh, things that are measured, you have, uh, it'll, it, by default, things that show up in your data, there's traffic sources, how did people find you, that kind of thing, organic search, paid search, the devices they're on when they came to your site, their location, that's their physical location, whether it's a country, state, or city level. And then you get basic metrics like pages that were viewed, um, sessions, which is another name for visits. Um, you also see how people move around your site. And that's kind of an important thing to remember is that uh, all of the measurements occur basically when that code fires on a page. So each time your web page reloads, Google is measuring data. But what that also means is if there's no page load uh, on an activity, nothing gets measured. So there are a lot of things, important things that are not measured by default. So some of those include uh, video interactions. So if you have a video on your site, we can't tell if anybody hit play, pause, that kind of thing. If you're trying to measure downloads, button clicks, uh, interactions with a chat bot, uh, visits from email. So none of these are measured by default. The good thing is you can measure these, uh, but they require additional setup, uh, usually involving Google Tag Manager. Um, we're not going to get into that stuff today, but um, I'm happy to uh, tell you more about how to do that um, offline. 
So how is all the data organized? Um, at a very high level, when you open up your account, you'll see three columns like this. So when you check that little sprocket in the lower left, it takes you to your admin page, and you'll see three columns. So these are kind of hierarchical. Uh, so left to right, you've got accounts, and then properties, and then views. These, think of these as like a, a family structure. So account is the grandparents, property is parents, and views are like the children. Uh, all of the data that you're gonna be looking at is gonna be in the view column. So uh, one of the important things I wanna, we're gonna stress today is the, the ABCs of Google Analytics. So this is how they organize the data into reports. And it's a very, um, they, they actually really thought this out. So when you open up any report on the left, you'll see the, the menu structure and you'll see these four that I have in the, in the red box. I'm gonna zoom in on those four. And you see A, B, C. And actually there's two A's here. We've got the audience, acquisition, behavior, and conversions. So, but these are your, the main categories of reports that you will be getting all of your insights from. And what's really slick about this is they align with the sales funnel. So, the acquisition, behavior, and conversions, the reports in those sections line up with um, certain parts of a funnel. So I chose the, uh, the ADA funnel, if you're familiar with that one, uh, awareness, interest, desire, and action. So um, at the people in the awareness stage, you'll find information about that in the acquisition reports, interest and desire, they're more in the middle of your funnel. That'll be in the behavior reports. And then conversions are, uh, they're in the action section. So just, just remember, that's, that's how these reports are, are named and structured in Google Analytics. So, and these will also kind of map to some of those high level questions we wanted to know. So in the audience report, we'll find out who is visiting my site. Acquisition is kind of where did they come from? What traffic sources? Behavior is the what are they doing, and then conversions is how well are things working. So as you start digging into reports, you'll see these ABCs showing up everywhere. So this is just a, uh, this is just a, a traffic report. I grabbed uh, channel, channels uh, in the first column. But across the top is what I want you to see. We've got the ABCs, so the first three columns are uh, metrics associated with acquisition, and then the next three are behavior and then conversion. So you'll see these in every report that you look at. Now, when you're looking at a report, you're gonna see two types of uh, things in the report, and those things are dimensions and metrics. So let me just explain what those are. So dimensions, those are uh, like a descriptive attribute or characteristic of a, of a piece of data. So that can be a thing like, you know, the web browser a visitor used or the landing page where they entered your site or the country where they're um, located. And then a metric, that's the quantitative measurement of your data. So these are like numbers, how many of the things. So, Examples of this are sessions, page views, uh, bounce rate, that kind of thing. So we're gonna, let me show you a report here. So in a report, the first column on the left, that's always gonna be your dimension. And that's called the, the primary dimension. So on this report, uh, this is page is the dimension that we're looking at. And then across the top, these are all your metrics. So things like page views, uh, average time on page, bounce rate. These are all metrics. And then the numbers here are the actual numerical values of the metrics. So dimensions or metrics, that's what uh, make up every single report that you'll be looking at. Um, so what can I measure? This is, uh, this is where you can kind of let the, the mad scientist in you kind of come out, get excited about data if, if you do. Um, and just, again, I want you to be aware, remember that the data lines up with your sales funnel. 
but here's a like here's a location report if it was important for you to know where people are located we can find out that information and if you want to know desktop versus mobile um, which I think is super important uh, there's a report to find that and that's in the audience section because you know the the desktop and mobile experience are very different on your website uh, if you want to know what traffic sources, you know, people are using to get to your site, we can measure that in the acquisition section. So uh, a lot of us that are creating content, we're going to be really interested in, in the organic search piece of that, you know, because are, are we getting ranked? Are people finding us through search? The what, this is uh, another one that we're all happy to learn more about is, is the content. So this is the actual content. So if you're creating blog posts, uh, I don't know, podcasts, whatever it is, it'll be in this section, the, the page here. Uh, we can also see how people flow through your website, um, how they navigate from page to page, um, you know, because that, that can be useful in answering important questions about how people interact with your site. Another important thing is you're always going to set a date range uh, when you're looking at your data. Um, so their little, the, the date picker that they have is super useful. You can look, uh, I think, as granular as what's happening in one day, all the way up to, you can look at like a full year, two years, you know, and then any range in between. And you can do uh, date comparisons too. Uh, the one thing that Google won't help you answer, though, the who, what, where, when, it won't tell you why. You're going to have to kind of put on your thinking cap and come up with those answers based off of uh, the, the numbers, the, the hypotheses you come up with, and then the numbers, what uh, you can glean from those. So what does success look like? One of the things that you have to set up in Google Analytics, it's not set up by default, you have to tell Google like what success is. And the way we do that is with goals. So, or uh, conversion goals as you'll, you'll hear them called. So there's, there's four main goals that you can set up. One of the more popular ones is the first one here, this destination goal. And that's just what it sounds like. It's a destination. Somebody arrived at a page uh, that you set up, usually like a thank you page, and that meant they completed some action. So uh, the way you might set that up, so say I have a, a sign up for a newsletter, and then once you fill out that form, you go to a thank you page. So I would tell Google here, here's the page I want you to measure as a goal. I can set a value for it, um, a, a monetary value. You can just give it like a dollar. It doesn't matter. Anything that's greater than zero. Uh, and now we'll start measuring, you know, success on the site. And then where that shows up in your reports is over here on the right. So I'm, I'm looking at a traffic report, but over here in the right, I'm getting data around this goal. So in this particular case, it looks like registrations uh, so if we look like right here, we see that, so organic search is converting, uh, getting people to sign up for registrations at a 1.89% and a, a total number of, uh, you know, 2,100 uh, registrations. We wouldn't get any of this information until we set up that goal. So that's why it's super important to, to set up goals. So I mentioned that this is a tool for answering your top business questions. I mean, that's, that's, that's all it is. You know, you have questions, Google hopefully can give you the answers. So specific questions you might have, um, how many mobile visitors does our site get? You know, does our site work in, well in every browser? Uh, we may want to know, you know, what traffic sources drive the most traffic or the best traffic. If you run a newsletter, you're going to want to know how well your email is working. Maybe you have partnerships with other sites. So which one of them drives the most traffic to your site? Uh, content wise, we're going to want to know like the top landing pages. And then, you know, what's the content that visitors view the most? You know, what do they want to read? What are they actually consuming on our site? 
Uh, and then conversions. So, you know, as we saw in that one previous report, you know, we might want to know what traffic source converts the best, um, which campaigns generate the most leads, are there social media channels that convert best, you know, it depends, we want to be able to evaluate each of the channels where we're doing marketing, and we can do that in the conversions section. So, people always ask me, where do we start? So, first, we have to address the elephant in the room. And that is that Google Analytics is really complex. So to kind of hammer that home, you know, we started with just these, these four categories and that's great. So you're like, oh, just four things I have to worry about. But that's until you start clicking into each of those. Then you start to see this. Now I'm gonna click into this behavior section and I get even more reports. So wherever there are these arrows, that means there's reports under there. So as you can imagine, it's crazy. So we go from four reports to roughly 36 to over a hundred. That causes a little bit of stress, which I totally get, especially if you're not uh, somebody like me who's in Google Analytics every day, um, and it's a big part of what I do. So there's hundreds of reports, and we're gonna we want to try to apply the 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 eighty twenty rule, if you will, if you're familiar with that concept, because you really only need about twenty percent of all these reports. Uh, most people. And then the question is, which ones are we going to choose from? Well, so, you know, how do we reduce this complexity? How do we choose those reports so we can feel less overwhelmed? What I, what I try to advise people is go back to questions. What do you want to know? We need to get some focus. So before you even open your analytics, what I advise uh, people to do is take out a piece of paper, doesn't have to be literally, but you get the idea. Um, and then I want you to write down your top three to five business questions, marketing questions that you need answered that would help you look like a rock star to your boss. And uh, you know, what do you need to know to grow your business? So once you have that list, it narrows your focus. Um, it reduces the complexity because now we know maybe which stage of the funnel uh, we want to answer a question about and then which reports map to that stage of the funnel. And hopefully that'll bring you a little less stress. So you don't have to worry about hundreds of reports. Now you only have to worry about a handful of reports. So some example uh, questions that might um, apply to this audience. So many of you are in B2B services, you know, so your goals that you want to measure could be, you know, did someone download a case study? Did they request a demo? Uh, did they schedule an appointment with our sales team? So you probably wanna know which traffic sources lead to conversion. So that would be one of your top questions. Uh, if you have an e-commerce site, this one's pretty easy. Your goal is most likely sales. So your questions then are gonna be, you know, what traffic sources lead to the most sales? Um, maybe which products get viewed the most? You know, do you get more sales uh, on mobile or desktop? So those are some different questions that you would want to answer uh, if you're marketing for an e-commerce site. So I want to give you six reports um, that I think anyone can use. And it, they're basically one or two from each of those categories, uh, the ABC categories. So the first one that I like to look at is this um, audience mobile overview report. This is the one that'll tell you, uh, it'll give you data on you know, desktop versus mobile. I don't, you don't, it also shows you tablet. You don't really need to worry about that as much unless the percentage is high. I know it's hard to see here, but the tablet percentage is only 2% of traffic. So I wouldn't worry about that. Many times it mirrors desktop behavior anyway. Uh, so this is a report that I think everyone can, can use. 
Um, second one is in the acquisition section. This is your channels report and channels are the highest level of traffic buckets. So by buckets, I mean like here we see organic search. So it's kind of generic. This is all organic search. This is all referring websites, all social networks. So you can see how those are performing uh, and driving traffic to your site. The other, uh, another traffic related report I like is the source medium report. This is one level down from the channel report. So this is showing us, uh, so before we saw organic search, well now we're seeing Google organic. So the exact um, or the more specific search engine. Um, and another case like referring websites. So here in this example, we've got indeed.com. So this is just one level down. And then we're all interested in the content report. So I wasn't going to leave those out. So the, the all pages report in the behavior section, this is where your content's going to be. So, um, you know, are your blog posts showing up here? Are people looking at them? Are they looking at product or service pages? Maybe you have a, a careers page. This is where, you're, well, you'll, where you will see uh, metrics and the performance of your content. Uh, and then another content related one is landing pages. So this is telling you the, the page where somebody entered your site. So I think it's important for us as content creators to know, did they enter on our content or somewhere else? So, you know, are they entering on a blog post? Um, and what are some of those top blog posts? So you can find that in this report. And then the last one I like is conversions. So again, you won't get any data here until you set up a goal, but once you do, you'll see actual numbers in here. So, uh, here we're looking at a registration goal. So here's the raw number. Here's the conversion rate. Um, and then here's the performance over time. So these are six reports that I think everybody can use. So we went from, you know, over a hundred reports possible to six. So that's why I, that's how I'm trying to simplify it for you. Now, obviously there's great information in a lot of those other reports, but you can get most of what you need just from these six reports. Um, I wanted to make sure to get some specific analysis tips in for this content marketing audience. So a couple things that you're gonna wanna do that'll help you as you're uh, analyzing your content. The first one is you wanna know what your traffic champions are. So these are any blog posts uh, or, or the blog posts that get the most organic traffic. And for most sites, it's going to be just three to five posts typically. Um, and then there'll be a long tail of, of posts that just don't get as many uh, views. So the way that we uh, can find this is we go into the landing pages report and then we're going to add a segment for organic traffic. So we're only going to be seeing uh, traffic from organic search. And then when we look at the report, we're also going to want to, so up here, this is, a, this is the table filter up here. It allows you to search and sort. So if you have blog written in your page URL, you can just type blog in here. Now it's going to show you, so we've got organic traffic and we have only the blog posts. And it's probably hard to see here in these small gray numbers, but these three are kind of stand out over the rest of the posts. So these are the top posts uh, getting traffic from organic searches. So now that you know that, what do you want to do with those posts? Well, there's a couple things. First, you're going to want to link to your highest converting pages. So um, and put your best calls to action on those pages. So, so think of these top posts as um, your, think of your website as a city and these top posts, they're kind of the highways going through your city. This is where you have the most eyeballs. So put your most important calls to action or billboards, if you will, on those pages. Um, you could test relevant lead magnet forms right on the page. Um, 
So this could be like a pop-up form. This could be a form right within the post. I've seen that uh, be successful on many sites. And then you're going to want to share these top posts uh, regularly in your social media accounts, whether it's LinkedIn or Twitter, Facebook, because these are popular. These are the ones that most people are viewing. So get them to even more eyeballs. Um, now, kind of the flip side of your traffic champions, it's not the exact opposite, but we have things called falling stars. So these are popular blog posts with declining traffic. So these are declining organic traffic. So um, they're getting outranked by newer articles or better articles and you're losing traffic. So you're going to want to identify these so that you can save them from uh, going off into oblivion. So the way we would do this, we're gonna use that same report we looked at before, but we're gonna do a date comparison. So for this one, I, we're gonna look at the month of December and then we're gonna compare it to the previous year. So we're gonna look at the previous month of December year over year. And what we see in this specific example, so here's, three of the top blog posts for the month of December, the Delta in the year over year comparison, they're all negative. So this lost traffic year over year, this one was down 25%, this one was down 33. So that means you're slipping in, in rankings. Um, maybe you're, you know, you had a well ranking page and now it's been leapfrogged by other better pages. So what we wanna do is we wanna try to fix those. Um, the other way to identify these is to click into an individual post. And if you see something like this, so we started way up here at, you know, whatever this is, uh, 8,000 visits and we're coming down here. So if you see this trend, that's a post that you're going to want to fix. So the way that we can fix that, um, my friend, uh, Andy Crestadina likes to call, he, he says, you want to make the best page on the internet for that particular topic. So ways to improve the quality of that declining page, you can, oh, sorry. Uh, you can add images, videos, you can add statistics. If you have original research that no one in your industry has, put that on the page. Strong opinions are always great for uh, content. Uh, maybe contributor quotes. So reach out to uh, uh, subject matter experts in your field or your client's field. Um, also, the benefit of this is if they contribute on your blog post, you can, they can help you promote the post. So it's kind of a win-win there. And then hopefully after you make all these changes, you'll see that this article is now trending up. Uh, two more quick things to show you here and then we can get to the Q&A. Everybody always asks about keywords. What keywords are people using to find my content? Well, Google hid most of that about six or seven years ago, but they do show you some keywords. You can find those in the Search Console report uh, if you're not familiar with what Search Council is, that's the, uh, the newer term for Google Webmaster Tools. So what you need to do is connect uh, Search Council with Google Analytics, um, and I'll, I can show you how to do that offline. But once you connect those two, your Search Council data will be pulled in here. And so what you'll see, this column right here, these are actual phrases that people typed in to Google's search engine and then people clicked on these and we get that information here. So this is the number of clicks, this is the impressions, and then here's the click through rate. So this is super useful. You'll know what people are actually, you know, which phrases uh, they're actually clicking on to get to your content. Uh, a related report to this one, it's another Search Council report, is the landing page report. So instead of keywords, here we're seeing the actual pages that people uh, clicked on. They searched for some phrase and then they clicked into your site. And again, we get uh, the impressions, we get the click data, the click-through rate. Now, 
it's not great because ideally we would like the keywords and the associated landing pages that they went with. But Google intentionally split this up. They don't want you to have all that information. Uh, they claim it's a privacy thing. Some people agree with that. Some people think it's just a way to sell more of their ad products. Uh, that's a discussion for another time. But those are two uh, very specific reports that you can use. So Dennis, that's, uh, I know we've, we're probably at the, the time limit. So that's what I got for today. Do you want to open it up to questions and, uh, you know. Sure thing, Kyle. Everyone wants to stick around. If you got to leave, feel free to leave because I know it's uh, lunch hour for most of you. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, that was fantastic. That was such a great overview. And I loved the, um, your, your advice to first answer those questions before you even open up analytics. So that's great advice. Yeah, but and I then that's I, a big part. Yeah. Appreciate you going into uh, some tips specific to content marketers. Yeah. There was yeah. a, yeah. Linda asked a question when you were talking about those top organic posts. Uh -huh. She said, uh, is there a way to find out what page people visit after reading a blog post? Yes. So I'm at, the only way to, let me go into analytics to show you that. Um, Cause I can't, I don't have it in my presentation. So, uh, okay. Can you guys, you can see the analytics yep. here? I can see it. Okay. So let's, uh, I'm just, so this is the, uh, in case you're wondering, this is the Google demo account. I'm, so I'm not showing client data here. <laughs> Try to be very wary of that. Um, so let's just pretend that this is a blog post. And so if you want to know the next page they went to, you can come up here. There's a thing called navigation summary. So you'll click on this. And then what we see is, okay, so I got to explain this. It's a little complicated, but imagine this is your blog post. So this is the page we're interested in. All this stuff on the left, this is the pages people were on before that page. And then the column on the right, this is where they go after that page. So, you know, these first couple here are where they, where people mostly went. So this is a quick way how you can see from an individual post where people went. Um, and then another important thing to note here is it's kind of tiny, but here you've got entrances. So that means 14% of people entered on this, what we're calling a blog post. Um, and then this 85%, that, that's the rest of this column. And then same way on the exit side, there, or on the right side, there's exits here, it's 20%. So that means one out of five people, they left your website after this page. And then the rest of them went to one of these pages. So that's, that's a great way that you can measure uh, or see where people go next. So I hope, uh, hope that helps. Excellent. I, and I never knew Google had a demo account for analytics. Yeah, so um, I'll send you the link to that. Okay. Um, and I probably should have sent that in the thing. So if you guys don't have access to, like if you don't have your own website with analytics or you don't have access to your company analytics or your clients, there's this free demo account. It's like a merchandise store that Google, well, uh, well we're, we're looking at it now. And anyone can access it. So you just need a Gmail address. Um, I'll send the link to, to Dennis. He can share it with you later. And, and that way you can play around in analytics if you don't currently have access to the tool. Cool. So the next question, if you add fresh content to an older blog post, does mm -hmm. Google still give it weight in search results? And then the related question is, Michelle's wondering how updating old posts affects search. Yeah, so it's definitely, you, you'll republish the post. Um, Google will then re-index it, and it'll start basically um, kind of collecting, if you want to call it new data, kind of on the updated post. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is you don't want to change the URL. So you keep the same URL, and then you just, you make all your changes, and then republish it. That way, 
you're not because if, if you change the URL, you're basically starting from scratch again and you don't you don't want to do that. Um, there's a lot of people now that uh, there's a lot of marketers who uh, as part of their content creation recipe, they might 80% uh, of the time they might create new content and then 20% of the time they improve old content. So that's become a, a very uh, powerful strategy um, in the last couple years. So that would be something to consider for your website. Um, it also makes your creation a little bit easier. You don't have to keep coming up with new ideas, just build off of ones that, that you already have. Exactly, yeah, and I know our friend Andy Crestadina, I, I remember yeah. him giving advice that if you do, you were showing those um, reports on keywords and there's average position. So yep. his advice is like, if you find average position of like just over 10 and you can improve those, because over 10 means past page one. If you can improve Correct. that content, you can try to get that same post onto page one. Yeah, he's, he's I difference. forget what he calls those. Um, he's got a name for those, but, but yeah, those are, um, yeah, those are ones that are close to ranking. And when, right. when I say ranking, I mean on page one as the page one of Google search um, because the the old joke is where's the best place to hide a, a dead body on page two of Google search exactly because nobody well I'm probably the only one that ever goes to page two but <laughs> most people never go beyond the first page so if your right. post is not ranking on page one you're never gonna get seen so if you as Dennis said if you've got something that's in uh, that ranks like 11, 12, 13, improve it, republish it, and maybe it will start to get on the first page. Um, I just want to add to when you're really getting into kind of that fine tuning SEO type activities, you're probably going to want to invest in a tool like SEM Rush, um, Moz, uh, Ahrefs. There, there's a lot of them. They're paid tools, but they give you the actual keywords and pages for your site and how they rank. So Google doesn't do that anymore, but these paid services will. So while we're still on the topic of uh, updating existing posts, Linda is asking whether you should remove the date from the URL. <laughs> so this is a, this is a constant um, discussion. I think it, as always, it depends. If you, I think it, for me, I think it depends on the type of content you're creating. If you're a news site, so like, um, I don't know, you know, if you're creating content for say like CNN or maybe like a, a tech, you know, I don't know, tech crunch, is that, is that even still a site? Yeah, <laughs> it is. You know, so like, you know, if you're reviewing like the latest cell phone, then Yes, you know, if the if the news is changing daily, I think you do need a date cuz then cuz people want to know if they're getting the latest information on that tech on that uh I don't know, piece of policy, wh whatever it is. But if you're just writing about, you know, how your product can help uh you know, if you got a maybe you're a manufacturing firm and how you're product can help with with cutting metal or something that that's an evergreen thing and in that sense I would say don't put dates in the URL because a lot of times people will go to a post and if they look up at the URL and they see you know like oh 2018 they might be like oh there's probably newer information on this topic and then they don't read your post so that, that's kind of the theory of, of the date in it. So hopefully that makes sense. Yep. yep. And this, this, this uh, <laughs> gets us into potential like religious discussions because I know oh, people totally. feel strongly about this. No, I know people, people yeah. do and, and it's okay. <laughs> uh, our friend Jeremy asks about a demo site. Can it help you get certified in GA? Uh, I would say yes, just because you can play around with the tool. Um, I think if you want to get certified, I would definitely get familiar with using the tool. Um, and then also I would take the free classes that Google offers. I think if you just look up like Google certification, I think they call it Google Analytics Academy, maybe. 
they have all these free videos and that will actually prepare you for the questions they ask. Um, I think probably more than using the demo account, but you should use the demo account so that you know how to use the tool. So, so I guess do both if that, uh, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay, Sandra asks, do you use UTM codes? Uh, yes. I did not get into that because um, that can get, uh, that can be a long discussion. But so if you're not familiar, um, if you want to do campaign tracking, um, you use these things called UTM codes and they are attached to the end of the link, uh, the content that you want to share. Um, where you especially need to use it is with email. So, let me just show you something here on the report. Let's see if they have any. Uh... Okay, so see how you don't see email here? Now, it's possible that they're not doing any email for this site. Um, but if you, if you send a lot of email and you don't tag those links with a UTM tag, it, that tells Google. So this is one of those customizations I was talking about. You have to tell Google that a link is coming from email because they can only tell if something comes from another website, sorry, another website, a search engine. Um, and that's it basically. So you have to tell them everywhere else. So they can't tell if a link came from a, an email provider. So, what happens is your, your email traffic, it ends up lumped in this direct bucket. Let's see if, okay, it, I can't really tell, but sometimes you'll see like distinct big spikes, which is like the profile of an email. And that's how I know that somebody's not tagging their, their email. So um, I can, uh, I'll send it, um, in the stuff that we send out, Dennis, I'll add a, an article. There's a great article about how to use campaign tagging, okay. UTM codes. So I'll yep. include that too. Okay. And Todd just mentioned in the chat that he has a spreadsheet that allows for consistent creation of UTM yep. code parameters. Yep. Yeah, thanks for that, Todd. That's the best way to, to be consistent. There's tons of free um, uh, to, uh, spreadsheets out there that will build these links for you. Um, and if you're going to be sharing a lot of things, you probably want to use a spreadsheet. If you just use the Google one, it just lets you do one at a time, but the spreadsheet has them all in one place. And so I just think it's easier. And Kyle, as we are looking to wrap up shortly, where can people go if they want to learn more about you or the things that you do? Uh, yeah, so you can go to my website. It's just, it's my name. Um, and we'll, sh I'll share this in the follow up. Uh, KyleAkerman.com, K Y L E A K E R M A N. I write a, uh, I write an analytics newsletter that some of the attendees uh, are subscribed to. You can subscribe to that there. And um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm just uh, Kyle Akerman, and I'm, I'm happy to be a, a resource about uh, analytics. Because um, I think that all marketers need to have analytics in their toolkit. You don't need to be expert, but you need to know how to use the data that's available to get insight. That's an excellent closing statement. Uh, so Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today and thanks to everyone who attended. I'll be sharing the recording later today. Uh, we have another meetup tomorrow, um, but in the meantime, everyone stay safe and uh, Take care. And uh, Dennis, if you've got yes. extra questions that you didn't get to, um, yep. send them to me in an email and I'll, okay. I, I can I'll send you, them yeah. and send them back. I'll send you the chat log so you can see anything that we might have missed. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a great day. Thank you, Kyle. Take care. Yep. What? See ya. Bye. Thank you so much.